It's a classic play with a classic storyline, but when it hits the stage here, it'll have some local flavor to it. Michelle Tremblay's Hosanna will open this weekend, but rather than being set in Montreal and speaking to the French position within Canada, this production will be set in Winnipeg and will feature not only an Aboriginal storyline, but an Aboriginal actor in the lead. Global's Connie Tomoto gives us a sneak peek. Because there are so few um, professional Native actors. As a First Nation person, Kevin Loring knows he has a responsibility as an Aboriginal actor. You do end up, you know, becoming a bit aware of, you know, you are sort of, you're the Native actor. So. And as a role model for his community, that responsibility is reflected in his work. One of the things about being a Native actor is uh, there's always the possibility that, that somebody could go like, oh, you know, you got the part because you're Native, right? So my goal is always be undeniable like just be the best possible actor you could be. Loring plays the lead in the Manitoba Theatre Center's adaptation of Hosanna, a story of a drag queen who struggles to find her personal identity, something Loring was able to relate to growing up half Aboriginal. At school it was always, are you native or are you white? And so I was kind of split down the middle. I didn't, I had to decide whether I was native or white and then I came to a conclusion that I'm both, I'm just me. And it's kind of Hosanna's journey. Originally set in Montreal during the Quebec separatist movement, MTC's Hosanna was also adapted to reflect a First Nations perspective within Winnipeg. I got excited by the fact that it could actually speak, it's a good enough play that it could actually address another cultural issue in Canada, and that is First Nations within Canada. The First Nations struggle within Canada to actually find uh, their own place within this community and to be, to be, uh, accepted by Canada for who they are and, uh, and to find their own voice. The First Nations adaptation of Hosanna is part of Tremblay Fest, the Manitoba Theatre Centre's winter playwright festival. Connie Tomoto, Global News, Winnipeg. MTC Warehouse Theatre will kick off Tremblay Fest 2005 this Thursday with Michelle Tremblay's Hosanna. In this raw story, a misfit farm boy flees to Montreal where he becomes a fashionable hairstylist by day and a woman of the world by night. He is Hosanna, the drag queen with the biggest mouth in Montreal. Through the play, illusions are gradually stripped away to reveal Hosanna's true nature. You know, you're not that important. Besides, in that idiot outfit, you look so little like a man. If anyone were to hear me call you a bitch, they'd take you for a lesbian. Yeah? Well, I'm no lesbian and I can prove it. You? From January 20th to February 6th, you can enjoy the works of celebrated Quebec playwright Michel Tremblay through uh, stage plays like the one you just saw, films, radio plays, and bilingual lectures and panels. Now, these programs are available at various locations, including, of course, uh, Manitoba Theatre Centre, Fairmont Hotel, the Winnipeg Free Press, and Uptown Magazine. Should be a great festival. While the stars will while the stars will over the next few weeks, Tremblay Fest also kicks off Thursday, and the Black Hole Theatre Company is already in pursuit of an audience. And I serve them their beer and their hard stuff till I drop dead. Students from the University of Manitoba have taken on Michel Tremblay's play, Marcel Pursued by the Hounds. This challenging performance explores the dangerous relationship between childhood fantasy and the demons that haunt adult life. Audiences will not only see the world of Marcel and his sister Therese, but also a spirit world. Uh, Tremblay's more recent plays, uh, it's, I think, uh, Tremblay at the height of his powers as a, as a writer. Uh, the dialogue is wonderful, uh, uh, very poetic. And because of this uh, dual reality, it's quite spectacular theatrically. Marcel Pursued by the Hounds will run at the Gas Station Theatre January 20th to 23rd and 25th to 30th. For a complete listing of festival plays, visit the website tremblayfest.com. Our the touching tale of motherly love, and the Terra players are bringing it to the stage as part of Tremblay Fest. Especially when the mother's an unmarried mother who dumps them. For the pleasure of seeing her again was written by Michel Tremblay as a tribute to his mother. She passed away before the Canadian playwright gained international success. The story looks at how a loving mother can affect her son's future. The play follows mother and son from the time he is 10 until he is 20. And although it's fairly autobiographical, it still will appeal to a wide audience. Come on. Oh, come on. 
the play's sort of told in a compelling balance of, uh, of humor and sort of poignancy. It's sort of um, very specific and, and introspective. At the same time, it's uh, broadly universal. Um, it celebrates mothers everywhere and the, the bond and, and uh, presence and, and the part they play in our lives. Starting tomorrow, for the pleasure of seeing her again, we'll run at the Irish Cultural Center until January 29th. For showtimes and more information on the festival, visit tremblayfest.com in our city. We've already given you a preview of some of the Tremblay Fest shows, but now we've turned to a local actor to give us a lowdown on the French-Canadian talent being honored at this year's Master Playwright Festival. A woman without chewed nails looks ugly on stage. Besides, it's bad manners. Actor John Bluthner is doing a quick study of playwright Michel Tremblay. He's a playwright who, uh, uh, who's translated into so many different languages. He's a huge hit in Scotland, believe it or not. Not only is Bluthner performing in the at-home theater production of Tremblay's play Johnny Mangano and his astonishing dog, but he's also getting ready to interview the Canadian playwright. He's very charming, uh, very witty, funny guy. On Saturday, February 5th at St. Boniface College, Bluthner will have a public conversation with Tremblay. Now, considering Tremblay's success and influence in Canadian theatre and around the world, it'll be a daunting task, but Bluthner says it's one he's looking forward to. Every once in a while I sit down and I try and formulate some questions to try and think of what kind of things, you know, people would want to know about him, because he has, he's had a, a, a lengthy career and he's done, you know, so many different types of plays and, and novels. So, uh, yeah, I'm still kind of working on that. For more information on the festival, visit tremblayfest.com. I'd find you nuts and kill you. I still might do it. Well, itself into a mini Montreal over the next few weeks, all in the name of Michel Tremblay. He's a Quebec playwright, and he's being honored with his own festival here. But one production offers a prairie twist. Arts reporter Barbara Brunzel brings us that story. How many times I got to tell you I'm not one of the girls? Hairdresser by day, drag queen by night. Michelle Tremblay's play, Hosanna, takes a close look at the masks people wear. But this Winnipeg production of the Quebec playwright's work has added another layer to the question of identity. The main character is no longer a francophone cross-dresser from Montreal. She's an aboriginal drag queen from Winnipeg. I'm thrilled in a way that it's uh, a play that's almost 30 years old. Uh, is speaking to a whole other generation and is a good enough play that it can address a whole other culture. The director made the changes to the script after a research mission to this Winnipeg gay bar. The lead actor recalls the experience. You know, we went out on New Year's Eve and saw all the cleans out in full force and it's quite amazing. In fact, I'd say um, 90 to 95 percent of the drag queens that were out that night were native. The performer's discovery is no shocker to Melvin St. Goddard. The Aboriginal man has been wearing the mask of a female performer, Anita Stallion, since 1998. I think for, for Winnipeg, because we do have such a large demographic of Aboriginal people to begin with, that's where it then tends to spill over into, into the, the gay, lesbian, bisexual, and, and, and two-thirds of people. Anita Stallion says she's seeing more Native sisters than she used to. She says it's just taken them longer to come out of the dressing room. In the Aboriginal culture, um, we, we pride ourselves on being very humble people. So drag is something, of course, that's a little bit more out there. It's got a little bit more edge to it. So I think that in its way, it's also that much harder for us as, as Aboriginal people. Anita Stallion is proud to impersonate her cultural heroes. In this case, Susan of Gluckhart. Is this our, who is it? I don't know. But she does have a message for those who will be buying tickets to see an actor impersonate her. I would hope they'd be entertained. I'd hope they'd be educated. And I'd hope that they'd still be open-minded. It's something that's important, I think, for myself, for people to know that this isn't something that we just do, you know, for kicks. If you don't want to do it, just say so. And I'll do it myself. Hosanna runs at Tremblay Fest until February 6th. Barbara Brunzel, CBC News, Winnipeg. The province is at the Jeff Center, Manitoba. The impromptu of Outremont is part of Tremblay Fest. 
The play is about three sisters gathering together for a birthday celebration. But rather than being a joyous occasion, both the characters and the audience are taken on an emotional journey laced with humor. Director Nancy Drake says the play will have a lot of appeal for local audiences. Tell me about it. Can you this play is about culture. It's about art. It's about people who appreciate art. It's about the dying of an old art form and the coming of a new one. It is about our own culture as Canadians. And so it's um, going to appeal on that level. The Impromptu of Outremont is running at the Forrest Nickerson Theatre in the Deaf Centre, Manitoba, until January 30th. This weekend, the Theatre Centre's Master Playwright Festival starts today, and Winnipeggers will have the chance to immerse themselves in the work of one man. Arts reporter Barbara Brunzel joins us live with more. Hi, Barb. Krista, for the next 19 days, actors and directors in this city will honour the work of Quebec playwright Michel Tremblay. This is the first time a Canadian has been honoured at the festival. But why should Winnipeggers trudge out into the cold and snow to see the plays, lectures and films? Here's the answer. Well, he's, he's just so gritty. He has an incredible eye for detail. He's way too smart. I'm so in awe of the man. Well, I mean, he's genius. Michel Tremblay. To the actors who bring the Quebec playwright's characters to life, he's a genius. To the audience, he's just one of the crowd. That's because Tremblay is the voice of the commoner, those living, breathing souls inhabiting the east end of Montreal, where it has been said that the people are poor, French, and forgotten. It's the place that served as a source of inspiration for the bulk of Tremblay's work, and it's a place that will in many respects always be his home. Born June 25, 1942, Michel Tremblay grew up here, on Fabre Street, in the heart of the industrial district. The youngest of three children, he was no stranger to poverty. His mother, a Quebec housewife, and his father, a worker in a printing plant, the Tremblays shared an apartment with three other families just to make ends meet. The perfect environment to fuel a budding writer. We were 12, sometimes 13 people in a seven-room apartment. So much was going on that it was always interesting. Bad things and good things, but always exciting. Although Tremblay trained to be a linotypist, right from the start, he was winning awards for his writing. Here come the chairs! Then, in 1968, he wrote Les Belles Sœurs, and there was no looking back. Over the years, he's worked as a dramatist, novelist, translator, adapter, and screenwriter. His resume is extensive, including 24 plays, three musical comedies, 12 novels, four collections of short stories, seven film scripts, as well as numerous adaptations and translations, work that is studied and performed around the world, earning international acclaim and a mantle full of awards. That'll be Janine pulling me back. But how do Tremblay's stories about the East End of Montreal translate to other parts of Canada and beyond? Don't chew your nails. You know, I hate the actors and directors of Manitoba Theatre Centre's Tremblay Fest believe they do. Tomorrow. Wow. Yeah. The Winnipeg Festival is the first in history dedicated to the work of the Bard of Montreal. My child. The francophone population in the Prairie City is small, about 15 to 20,000 people. But Tremblay's audience is an expansive one. His themes universal, his vision profound. Wanting <laughs> a production of Tremblay's En Pièce de Taché, a story about a sibling who returns to his dysfunctional family in East End, Montreal, after being sent to an asylum for 15 years, was intimidating at first for the University of Winnipeg Theatre Students Association. But it didn't take long to find some sort of common ground. When I was writing my director's notes, I kind of saying, you know, I'm a first-generation Canadian and Anglophone. I was kind of like, you know, what do I know about being Quebecois? But as soon as I started delving more into him, he's very universal. And what he's saying really speaks to um, us as a whole and really Canada as a nation that's very multicultural and that we have all these groups that are struggling to find their identity and I think that Tremblay really touches upon that and that any group, Quebecois or otherwise, coming to this play will take something from that and relate to it. Then I lose all track of time. University of Manitoba theatre students are presenting Tremblay's Marcel Pursued by the Hounds, the story of an emotionally troubled teenager who has to battle the hounds of his own hell. 
The professor and director says Tremblay resonates on a number of levels. In English Canada, I think he has a reputation simply as a very strong storyteller, uh, as uh, someone who can create very vivid characters, uh, especially very strong women characters. He's a, he's a gift to, uh, to female actors. And uh, I think people were very fascinated by Tremblay because it seemed like uh, a window through which they could come to a somewhat better understanding of uh, people in Quebec. Listen, smarty pants, if you don't want to help me, just say so and I'll do it myself. There are those involved in the festival who have dared to make a few changes to Tremblay's work to ensure it remains relevant in the prairies. The MTC Warehouse production of Hosanna is turning the story of a Montreal drag queen into an There's aboriginal drag queen from Winnipeg. Hosanna has always also been seen as an allegory for English uh, Canada and French Canada and kind of that relationship. And just by recasting uh, the role and by casting Kevin Loring, who is a First Nations uh, actor, uh, it just changed the emphasis from Francophone to First Nations. Don't talk back! With or without a little tweaking, the words of Michel Tremblay are sure to make both actors and audiences at Tremblay Fest think about their own lives. One of the actors performing in the Winnipeg Mennonite Theatre production of The Real World sums it up best. As somebody who's lived a number of years, I see my own life in his life. You can just really see that there's nothing fake. Tremblay Fest runs throughout the city at several venues until February 6th. For more information, go to our website at winnipeg.cbc.ca. Thank you, Barb. The CBC's Barbara Brunzel reporting live. Time now for... One of the shows attracting audiences is Avira Theatre's Story for Late Night Drinkers. This is a collection of early short stories by Michel Tremblay that have been adapted for an audience. The production's taking place at the Ralph Connor House on West Gate. The local mansion is acting as the set for these dark supernatural tales. Your evening? Good, it's g quite good, isn't it? Uh, once the show starts, they'll be taking on a guided historical tour of the building and sort of strange occurrences will happen as they, as they move through the house. And there's uh, you know, old rooms and stairwells and closets and basements and, and all these sort of wonderful spaces to put on the show. Story for Late Night Drinkers runs at the Ralph Connor House from the 27th through the 30th. Fest qui se poursuit cette semaine. Louis-Philippe Wimet nous parle de la pièce Albertine en cinq temps et Johnny Mangano and his astonishing dogs. Eleven years old. And he was chasing her like she was a woman. Elle se trouve dans une vie qui, qui ne lui convient pas. Albertine est emmurée dans sa dure réalité. Michel Tremblay nous la présente en cinq temps. À 30 ans, à 40 ans, à 50 ans, à 60 ans et à 70 ans. Dans ce drame à plusieurs voix, la vieille Albertine retourne dans son passé et confronte ses démons. C'est une autre frustration, si vous voulez, euh, d'être trappée dans une vie qu'elle n'a pas choisie. And she still likes it. After all that's happened, that's what's killing me. Impuissante, Albertine se confie à sa sœur Madeleine. La rage l'habite devant tous ces hommes qui lui vont imposer une vie qu'elle n'a pas choisie. Michel Tremblay explore la solitude de certaines femmes issues des milieux populaires. Ce n'est pas un, un fin d'espoir, c'est un fin d'acceptance. I couldn't find the words to explain the danger, so I just hit. I'm as faithful as a dog. Dogs again! Carlotta ne peut plus supporter son Johnny. Ça fait plusieurs années que le couple présente un spectacle de chien et elle n'en peut plus de son numéro de cirque. Johnny est content, lui. Il pense que tout va bien, mais c'est parce qu'il est un rêveur et c'est ça qu'elle qu dit. Elle, elle est le, le personnage qui pense que non, les, des choses, ils peuvent être mieux, ils peuvent changer, je ne suis pas content. Johnny Mangano and his Astonishing Dog est une des premières pièces de Michel Tremblay, toujours à la recherche d'un parfum d'identité. Il y a beaucoup de, de niveaux dans la pièce. Alors, comme ça, ça donne à, aux comédiens, à nous, à beaucoup d'opportunités à jouer, de, de, des choses, des émotions différentes. 
L'action se déroule au Coconut Inn, un édifice de la rue Saint-Laurent. L'auteur s'éloigne du plateau Mont-Royal, mais explore toujours cette quête vers la liberté. De point de vue théâtral, il ne se répète jamais. De, de point de vue de euh, mise en scène des choses comme ça, la présentation de la pièce, la structure de, de, dramatique est différente pour chaque pièce. Et à la prochaine série. This production, Albertine in Five Times, was written by Michel Tremblay in 1984 and is still considered as one of his most daring theatrical achievements. It focuses on Albertine as she confronts herself and her actions at five different times in her life. Albertine in Five Times runs at the Colin Jackson Studio Theater, third floor, Portage Place, until February 6th. For showtimes, visit TremblayFest.com. Coop production of Albertine in Five Times. I do the best I can. This play was written by Michel Tremblay in 1984 and is still considered one of his most daring theatrical achievements. It focuses on Albertine as she confronts herself and her actions at five different times in her life. It's incredibly complex. Uh, there are so many layers. It, it is challenging beyond belief. And uh, also, I think um, it, its humanity is just absolutely exquisite. Albertine in Five Times runs at the Colin Jackson Studio Theater, third floor, Portage Place, until February 6th. For showtimes, visit www.playfest.com. Monster qui continue toujours à Winnipeg ce soir qui continue toujours à Winnipeg. Ce soir, nous vous parlons de la deuxième et dernière production en français. Il s'agit du train. Voici une pièce sombre, très sombre. Vous croyez que je suis fou, n'est-ce pas? Je n'ai pas dit ça. Mais vous le pensez. Non. Si, vous le pensez. Mais non. Si. Non. Si, vous le pensez. Non. Monsieur X ne veut pas, veut pas vieillir, veut rester jeune. Et puis moi, j'ai trouvé ça très intéressant, le concept de, de pouvoir rester jeune toute notre vie. C'est bien amusant. Monsieur Z, il est très... Euh, euh, il est rendu comme ici, il vivait une vie de vieux. T'sais, il est pris dans ses habitudes. Assez de m'attaquer ainsi, je ne vous ai rien fait et vous ne me connaissez pas. Oh, si je vous connais, vous êtes comme tout le monde, le petit bourgeois perdu dans la masse de petits bourgeois. On dirait que les deux sont pris dans, dans leur voie à eux, puis c'est trop tard. Même s'ils le réalisent, euh, on ne peut pas le changer. On pourrait, mais ça ne prend pas juste une, une journée dans le train. Vous n'avez aucune raison de vous moquer de moi. S'il y a un fou ici, c'est bien vous. Votre femme vient d'avoir un enfant et vous ne savez même pas si c'est un garçon ou une fille. Tous ces genres-là réunis dans un 45 minutes. Alors c'est très intense pour les oreilles. Puis... Comme les pièces le sont aussi, que le train c'est très intense. Des gens qui ont l'âme trop grande et le cœur trop tendre. Il y a deux ans, je suis allé voir tous mes amis, les amis de ma femme, devrais-je dire, et je leur ai demandé de venir en aide à cette pauvre femme. C'est vraiment pour intégrer le public dans la pièce, vraiment. Le public euh, se sent comme s'ils sont avec nous dans le train, comme si les problèmes que raconte M. X, c'est vraiment leurs problèmes à eux aussi. On essaie d'avoir une ambiance vraiment d'intimité. Et pourquoi n'étiez-vous pas avec elle quand elle a eu cet enfant, hein? Pourquoi? J'avais peur! J'avais peur qu'elle souffre! Cet enfant qui est sorti d'elle a dû lui faire mal, très mal! Je ne l'aime pas, mais je ne voulais pas qu'elle souffre. Vous n'aimez pas votre femme? Non. Vous n'aimez pas votre femme? Non. Vous aimez la vôtre, vous? Le train est présenté jusqu'au 6 février à la salle Martial Caron du Collège universitaire de Saint-Boniface. Et Monique, je vous... Vous avez vu several of the plays. Tonight, we'll take you to a Michel Tremblay show that hasn't been translated into English. Local theater group Les Chiennes du Soleil is bringing two short works by the French Canadian playwright to the stage in his native tongue. Audiences will be treated to Eloge de la Gourmandise and Le Train. Le Train is Michel Tremblay's first play, and it's it's a great play. It's very dramatic. It makes you think quite a bit about you know, the way, the way you run your life, the way things in your life are happening, and it makes you think about happiness. What, what is happiness in life? 
Latrain and Elage de la Gourmandise will run at the St. Boniface College tomorrow and February 6th. The Thanks, Andy. They're a well-known touring company in the United Kingdom, but at least once a year, Dreamscape UK tries to make the trip to our city. They're here now with the play Danny Manon, Sacri Sandra, as part of Tremblay Fest. But I caught up with them to talk about the other side of their double bill. I used to make quite a nice little living, you know, as a writer, without... The British theatre company Dreamscape UK has a punishing schedule while they're in our city. Well, we're not part of a big publicity machine, Absolutely. unfortunately. So we're, we're out on the streets, pounding the streets, trying to get people uh, aware of this. Not only is the group performing Danay Manon Sacri Sandra as part of Tremblay Fest, but with a second show, they're also trying to get another Canadian playwright, Edmonton's David Belke, a little attention. He's very well known in Ed Edmonton, very thoughtful, very busy in Edmonton, but obviously Canada being such a vast place is not that well carried um, um, outside Edmonton. Like when Norman Bates came out of that <laughs> Bless you, Billy Wilder tells the story of a British screenwriter struggling to make ends meet in Hollywood, and her patience, an artist who has never seen a movie in her life. The relationship's very much along the lines of films like The Odd Couple and The Apartment, um, Billy Wilder films, in fact. Uh, very quirky, very English in many ways. Dreamscape has been touring to Winnipeg since 2002, but this is the first time they've added another show to the bill. It has to be financial, <laughs> primarily. We, we've been doing the Writers' Festival. This is our third year. Mm -hmm. And each year, we, we always aim to break, break even. That's the best we can manage. Last year, we made a little bit of a loss, but we, we can live with that. And, and we're unfunded, so we, you know, we rely totally on box office. Well, you ruined me for life. Why, Mrs. Robinson? And while Dreamscape already has quite a following in our city, going to their shows is the only way to ensure they'll make another visit. Please do. <laughs> and then we'll be back. Bless you, Billy Wilder will run at the Colin Jackson Theatre until Sunday for showtimes call 942-5483. And for Humbley Fest plays, including Surprise Surprise. Written by Michel Tremblay, Surprise Surprise is an amusing series of conversations between three working class women. Each woman is in her own home on the telephone. An event is in the works, but a case of mistaken identities causes problems for the ladies and could lead to disastrous consequences. Another one? How many is that today? This is the 21st of February, my birthday. And this is not a serious play at all. It's uh, very fast-paced. It's uh, definitely a comedy. It's not serious at all. It's 25 minutes, a little slice of life of these three women's lives. And uh, I know that audiences are really going to enjoy it. Surprise, surprise runs tomorrow and Friday at 7 p.m. and on Saturday at 3 and 6 p.m. All the shows take place at the Winnipeg Contemporary Dancer Studio Theatre. For more information on the festival, visit TremblayFest.com. 11th Mennonite Theatre is pushing the envelope with their submission in this year's Tremblay Fest. I give you an example, just... The Real World by Michel Tremblay asks the question of whether a writer has the right to use events in his own family in his plays. The Real World is provocative and producing it was a gamble for the Winnipeg Mennonite Theatre. Initially they had concerns that it would not be to their traditional audience's taste, but after much debate they decided to go ahead and put it on the stage. Please don't make jokes. It won't work. Not today. We, we thought that the characters, the, the life uh, uh, that he presents on stage would be something that even if people didn't want to see it, they should see it, and it, it's, it's just a wonderful play. The Real World runs tonight, tomorrow, and Saturday at 8.05 p.m. at St. Boniface College. Although, although we Actually, I found out by accident. Et puis le Tremblay Fest se termine dimanche par une rencontre publique avec Michel Tremblay. Une conversation amicale en compagnie de Roger Léveillé. Bien, je vais lui parler de toutes sortes de choses, euh, sans doute de sa grand-mère qui est née dans l'Ouest canadien, euh, de l'utilisation du joual euh, dans son théâtre, euh, du développement de son théâtre, euh, de son attrait pour la tragédie grecque. Je pense que c'est un, un théâtre très tragique, euh, pas seulement parce que souvent c'est des gens misérables, mais dans la structure des pièces. Cette rencontre avec Michel Tremblay aura lieu au Collège universitaire de Saint-Boniface. L'entrée est gratuite. The name Michel Tremblay has been on the lips of everyone at local theaters. But now the award-winning playwright himself is in the house to see how Winnipeggers are paying tribute to his life's work.
croyez que je suis fou, n'est-ce pas? Je n'ai pas dit ça. Mais vous le pensez? Non. Si vous le pensez. It's, it's at, at the same time wonderful and scary. A two-week festival featuring nothing but his own works is also quite an honor for award-winning playwright Michel Tremblay. There are a total of 14 plays on the bill for Tremblay Fest 2005, but oddly enough, one of his most critically acclaimed scripts didn't make the cut. I was surprised that Les Bessa were not there, but I'm very happy because I'm sick of it. I can't watch it anymore. It's a good thing because being part of the audience is one of the main reasons Tremblay is in our city. This is his first opportunity ever to see so many of his own plays on stage in one festival. It never happens to anybody. Uh, some, uh, one from time to time or two when you're lucky. But uh, five in three days, it's, it's, quite, it's quite wonderful. How many times have I got to tell you I'm not one of the girls? Hosanna was the first show to get a visit from the esteemed playwright, but in the Manitoba Theatre Centre version, there is something noticeably different from the script Tremblay wrote in 1973. Instead of being set in Montreal, Hosanna takes place here. It worked perfectly well, and everybody was happy, and I was happy, so why not? I'm used to it, and it's, uh, and it's okay because sometimes the surprises are so strong and nice uh, that they make you forget the bad surprises you had uh, some other time. But it's no surprise that this visit must come to an end. Tremblay is in the midst of writing his latest novel, The Blue Book, but says he hopes to make it back to see one of his favorite authors showcased in the festival next year. I can't say, but I know who the festival will be around next year. I know. Na, 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 na. I'm so upset I can't think straight. What do you mean that? We'll have more on... Le Tremblay Fest s'est terminé dimanche. Le nombre de billets vendus pour ce festival consacré à Michel Tremblay a été à la baisse par rapport à l'an dernier. Environ 9 800 billets ont trouvé preneur, au lieu de 10 400 vendus pour le Halby Fest 2004. L'an prochain, le Festival des dramaturges sera consacré à l'auteur américain Eugene O'Neill, une légende du théâtre sur Broadway. Et puis soulignons que ce mercredi sera diffusé sur nos ondes une entrevue avec Michel Tremblay que j'ai rencontré samedi dernier lors de son passage à Winnipeg. Et Monique... Attendance was way up this year at the festival celebrating the Canadian playwright. And as Michel Tremblay tells Shaw TV's Tracy Koga, every time one of his plays hits the stage, he still gets nervous. You, you're always afraid that nobody will show. I don't know why. Really? Yeah. Even I'm, to this day? Yeah. I'm always sure that people won't. Why would they get tickets for 15 of my plays? I'm not, it's very strange. And yet, as it's said, some people say, if you see all 15 Tremblay plays, you'll know exactly who the real Michel Tremblay is. <laughs> now, it's been known that you do draw from your past. So what inspires you to write the plays that you do, Michel? I think it's um, themes. It, it, I, I think that we're here to, the artists in general are, uh, exist to put a meaning on something that doesn't have any meaning, which is called life. I think that uh, what makes you right are things that are wrong in society, things that shock you, things that you despise, things that you think are not just, uh, or things that you want to, um, to explain to yourself. Or to, I think that to me writing for the past almost 50 years now uh, has been like writing a very long play, to, uh, not, not a very long play, a very long letter to myself, to try to explain the world to myself. I think that when you sit down and write about somebody or about something, it's because you want to uh, keep looking and to uh, find a meaning. So you're, uh, even, even when you write a letter, we don't write letters anymore. But I remember when I used to write letters, sometimes they were more written for myself than for the it's not just giving news, it's explaining what's happening and explaining what's happening in your life to the other person. You understand what is happening. So I think that the whole process of writing is that explaining the world to yourself and if other people want to share what you wrote with you, it's, it's wonderful. But there are probably millions of geniuses and very, very good writers who never had the chance to share with other people what they 
the explanation of the world they gave themselves. Some issues that you do come across in your plays, especially the one that was presented here at NTC Warehouse, Hosanna. And it was wonderful that director Michael Schumata based it in Winnipeg and <laughs> so many people come walking out. It was just so neat yeah. to talk about Main Street or to talk about that. Well, you have to think that a show is all, or should always be done for the people who, who are going to see it, people who are spending $40 to come and see Hosanna. And if there is a way to bring the play nearer to them, I wouldn't, maybe I, I couldn't do that with other plays, but in, in, in that specific time, they called me and they said, uh, this actor comes from uh, an autochthon, uh, the theater in Vancouver, and it would be nice if we played with that, with, uh, and we, we, we took the action in Winnipeg. And I said yes, because I knew somehow that for here, for this production now, it would be nice for the people of Winnipeg to see that. So I said yes, uh, for obvious reasons, I mean, because it's, that that show was done for the people who, who came to see it. Oh, but to see your works performed on stage, that must still be... Oh, yeah, the, I, I said that a millions of times, but it's true. The biggest, the greatest gift you can give a writer, a, a playwright, a living playwright, is to show to him or to her uh, as many different productions of their plays as possible. Because what is absolutely great and wonderful is that when you go to, I don't know, when you come here, or when you go anywhere in the world to see one of your plays, everything changes but what you wrote. The only thing that doesn't change is what you wrote, but everything else is different. The, the, the sen sensitivity, uh, sensibility of the director, of the writers, of the set designer, or light designer, everything is new, everything is they're not shaped the same way, they don't play the same way, but the words stay the same, so that's incredible. Because a book translated into German is the same book, you can't read it, but it's just a book. But a play, so many people do so many things differently than what you would do, that it's great. <laughs>